Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to why does nobody live in these 10 huge empty states? You know, like there's a... In the UK, I'm sure that in the US as well, Canada definitely, there's a property crisis. There's just not enough homes being built, you know, f that are affordable. Like, you know, the value of house prices has just skyrocketed. So people are moving further and further away from the big cities. So, you know, when I hear that there's 10 virtually empty states, I think, why, you know? But then I think maybe there's not enough jobs there. There's no industry there. Maybe this crime rate is really, really high. But to me, that's an opportunity. Like, I see that as an opportunity because, you know, if you're a company like Amazon, why not build a distribution center there or put something there, you know, which will encourage, you know, people to come out there for work. I feel like there's opportunity here. But then again, I'm sure they've probably thought about this, but I really want to understand why. Why are these states so empty? The United States has a lot of people. It's the third most populated country on the globe. If you think we're at risk of running out of room, you'd be wrong. Put it this way, if the United States was a calendar, our current population would fill up maybe the first 10 days. To put it another way, if the US was an OnlyFans model, we would only fill up the parts that have seen a plastic surgeon. So we have a lot of dirt for people to fill up. Today we're looking at the emptiest states in the US. What? And when I That's say the emptiest, analogy. they got way more land than they got people. And the way you figure this out is how many people do they have per wow, square mile? Square. Now there's several like, reasons why. Did that, didn't that look like Tetris? Like, it looks like Tetris. Of per square mile. Now, there's several reasons why we have states that are so underpopulated. It isn't always just rough terrain. One state might have more people, but the federal government kind of stands in the way. Another state was really a rough place to live in the early days, so people avoided it back then, and it still hasn't caught up with the surrounding states. We look at all that and more in today's video. Got it? Get it? Good. Good. Let's take a look. Kansas, yeah. Superman's home. Number 10, Kansas. This one is obvious, especially if you've ever driven through Kansas. It is so flat and there is nothing around. You'll actually drive for 45 minutes and think, how long have I been driving? It's been the same scenery. Am I parked? Wow. What Kansas lacks in people, they make up for in wheat. They produce more wheat than any other state in the nation. And just the nature of wheat farming tells you it's gotta be flat, boring land. The Kansas landscape is dotted with a whole bunch of really small towns and just a few big cities. The biggest would be the Kansas City area, which they kind of share with Missouri. You also got Topeka, which isn't terribly big, and that's also up there by Kansas City, and then you have Wichita. After that, it's really just a bunch of small towns and farmland. So why does Kansas have so few people? Kansas is a combination of rural areas, farmland, and prairies, which result in a relatively low population density. Now there's one other related component to the low population in Kansas. It's farm workers. Farm work is for the most part, seasonal work. So they might have a whole bunch of people move in there during farming season, not as much these days because a lot of it's automated, but back in the day, and a lot of them didn't stay when the season was over. So it was almost like this transient state. People moved in for the season, moved out when season was over. Not a lot of them stayed behind. The population density in Kansas is 35.5 people per square mile. Kansas wow. has just under 3 million people, ranking them 36th in the nation, but they're 15th in size. Buying a house in Kansas, like I'd love it if he included the average property value for a house in Kansas. Like if you're someone who can work remotely, like as a software engineer or something like that, you could probably save a bunch of money if you like bought a house in Kansas. That could be an idea to be fair. Number nine, Nevada. There's a few reasons Nevada is a little light when it comes to people, and it has nothing to do with people buried in the desert or aliens abducting people. Legend has it there are a lot of people buried in that desert, but not enough to really impact the population. Here's the thing, it's the federal government. 85.9% of Nevada is owned or controlled by different federal agencies. In a way, Nevada is sort of the second smallest state we have if you eliminate all the federal land. Besides all that, 
God, it is a desert. It's desert landscapes. It's rough terrain, limited water resources. So there's really only a few areas with any serious amount of people live. Las Vegas, Reno, a couple other places here and there are just small towns. Laughlin, I guess, is an okay sized one. Nevada's population is just a little over 3 million residents, putting them as the 32nd most populated state we have. In size, they're ranked seventh. Their population density looks like this. They've got 28.9 people per every square mile. That's not a lot. I mean, like would I live in Vegas? Vegas, I mean, fun, fun place. Fun place, you know, had a lot of fun there. But to live there, that heat all the time. Hmm. But actually, to be fair, I think you could get over the heat, couldn't you? And every, every, every place is going to have air conditioning. I, I could probably live in Vegas. Number eight, Nebraska. Pretty much everything I said about Kansas, you could say about Nebraska. I mean, the situation that they have today is the same as Kansas, but they have a lower population. And a lot of that has to do with the early days. As people were heading west, for the most part, they left St. Louis and they would go straight through Kansas Valley. for a couple reasons. One, they'd get to Kansas City and then just keep heading west to Denver, or they'd cut up near Wyoming. But a lot of them stayed out of Nebraska for a couple reasons. Most were heading west to California. And if you went north, you were kind of going to Oregon. Oregon. Back in the day, not as many people were heading to Oregon as they were California. On top of that, Nebraska had the Plain Indians. I mean, they both did, but it was a little more aggressive in Nebraska. That's what a lot of historians say. So wagon trains and settlers moving through Nebraska might have had a rougher time with the locals. And like we've learned in other videos and other things, if you start off slower than, let's say, a state that's equal, like Kansas is, you start off slower in the beginning, it takes a while to catch up. And I'm talking generations. They still haven't caught up. Other things come into play these days, like different industries are maybe springing up a little bit more in Kansas than they are in Nebraska. They're both very much farming states. Now there's nothing wrong with Nebraska. It's actually a pretty good state. They've got Omaha, they've got Lincoln, and a whole bunch of reservations, small rural towns, and farmland. Nebraska does lead the country in boredom though, so that's a plus. Currently, in there's boredom. about 2 million residents in Nebraska, 1.9 million, ranking them 43rd in the nation. In size, they're ranked 16th, making their population density approximately 25.7 people per square mile. Wow. I mean, if you don't work in a farm or you aren't a teacher in one of the schools or a police officer for the police department, what are you doing for a living in a place like that? Like, I guess it literally has to be, you know, because in terms of like a, working for a big financial company, there's probably no big financial company. Actually, there must be. There has to be banks. Of course there's banks. Yeah, that was silly. Number seven, Idaho. About 20 years ago, Idaho came before Nebraska on a list like this. Then it got popular and continued to get popular and it's still popular. It probably would have a really high population right now because it is a very attractive state to move to. I mean, beautiful land, clean air, fresh water, decent politics these days. They're just got some really rugged areas that people for the most part haven't ventured into yet. I mean, when I say things like that, I mean, overall, sure, you're gonna have little tiny mountain towns with a hundred people or so, but there's a lot of really rough areas that aren't really ready to support a city in Idaho. There's a lot of states you can say that for, but Idaho is beautifully rugged and that has sort of slowed down their population growth. And if you talk to the locals, they're kind of fine with that. And I'm sure they'll be fine with that forever. In the early days when the, you know, pioneers were coming out this way, a lot of them would head up into Cheyenne, Wyoming to about Twin Falls, Idaho, and then come back down to hit California and, you know, the San Francisco range. Not a lot back then would stay in Idaho. They'd keep going. But Idaho is changing, and I'm not sure how long they're going to be on a list like this. Right now, Idaho has a population of just under 2 million residents, 1.964 to be exact, ranking them 38th in the nation in population. And overall size, they're ranked 14th, putting their population density at 22.3 people per square mile. To give you an idea how low that is, New Jersey is number one and they have about 1,263 people per square mile. Wow. So that's a massive, massive difference. Any of you guys who live in these states on this list, like what is it like compared to, you know, a city that's uh, like, like New York City or any big, you know, metropolitan city that, you know, 
a foreigner would have heard of. Like, is it much more quiet? Like, are things much cheaper? Tra I'm guessing traffic is way less of a problem. C what's crime like? Number six, New Mexico. New Mexico is a little strange. It has had settlements much longer than most other states, yet they never really, you know, wow, move so forward. Empty. They just kind of Look stayed neutral for the longest time. A lot of that has to do with water and how rough the terrain is. These are things that could be overcome these days, but like I said, back in the early days, if it was too harsh of a area to really grow crops or live, people just moved on to a better place or an easier place. These days, New Mexico has a whole host of problems that I'm sure keep a lot of people away. But back in the 1800s, let's say, there was hardly any of the problems they have with crime and obviously drugs, things like that. And it's such a beautiful desert state, you think it would have caught on a little bit more than it already has. What also slows them down these days is some regions have limited access to infrastructure and services. You know, no one's going to build a highway into the mountains unless people are living in the mountains. Or should I say enough people are living in the mountains. In a way, it's it's okay because that's how New Mexico should be. It should stay a little wild wow, in my opinion. That. There's a few Beautiful. states that should just stay how they are. I think, and New Mexico is one of them. The current population of New Mexico is just over 2 million residents, putting them at number 36 in the nation. For size, they're ranked fifth. They're the fifth largest state. And this helps them get down to a population density of 17.4 people wow. per square mile. Not a lot of people. Whenever I hear New Mexico, I just think of Albuquerque and Breaking Bad, like Walter White, that's where he, him and his family lived. It looked really cool in that show, like, Number five, South Dakota. South Dakota is another state I don't think will be on this list much longer. They're doing a lot of the right things there and they become very popular. And you know what's strange? Nothing really changed. I mean, there was no giant industries that went in there. They haven't had an oil boom or something like that. It just kind of became like popular. I guess Idaho went through the same thing too. I think a lot of it word got out about the lifestyle there and how things are and people got really interested in it. Brave a little cold winters and you got a pretty nice state to live in. Doesn't hurt that your governor is kind of hot. Yes, that is a thing. People bring that up all the time. She's an attractive woman. She's very smart. I get comments like that all the time. I want to live in South Dakota because I like the great outdoors and the governor's hot. It's like, dude, get a life. But as of right now, they really don't have a lot of people living in a pretty good sized state. So why is that? The first thing is going to be the climate. It does get terribly cold in the winters. Their summers and their springs are really nice. Fall and winter, you know, they're not ideal to say the least. There are parts of South Dakota where you go to the store, you leave your car running because if you go in there in the winter and you come out 20 minutes later, y your car might not start. On top of that, Jeez. no matter where you are in South Dakota, you always seem to be two hours from every place at a minimum. It is wide wow. open spaces, relatively flat in most of the state and really behind the curve on population. Really the only type of people that move to South Dakota that aren't like let's say from there are going there for a job or they love the outdoors. If that's not why you're going there, why are you going there? Mount Rushmore? This is not a small state and they only have about 900,000 residents, putting them at number 46 in the nation. When you look at their size, they're ranked 17th, giving South Dakota a population density of 11.9 people per square mile 11 people per mile like that's mad like my family has like my immediate family there's six of us so add four people to that and that's the that's the amount of people you will find living in an area of a square mile that is not a lot you know when you visualize it that way that is a tiny amount of people wow Jeez. Number four, North Dakota. North Dakota is very similar to South Dakota. I mean, as far as cold and stuff like that, their governor isn't hot. It looks like a over-caffeinated high school chemistry teacher. And it's really not as attractive from a nature standpoint as South Dakota. Unless it's for work or you're dodging some penis, people really don't move to North Dakota. In the past, they've had some nice little oil booms. They get the oil from the fields up there. But other than that, the state continually loses population. They had continued growth every single census till the 19... 40 census where they lost and then they lost again, gained a little bit, lost, gained a little bit, lost, you know, so it's always this back and forth thing. When they start pulling oil out of the ground, that's the last time they really started gaining population, but it's predicted they'll start losing population again. We'll see how that plays out in the 2030 census. North Dakota is another place that just had a harsh climate. You know, they've got some good months for farming, but there's a good portion that year where it's just too cold to really farm. So over the decades, people just moved 
a little further south. And the agriculture and energy industry that they do have there, they don't really need a large workforce anymore. So there's not a bunch of jobs. And there's not a bunch of people living in the state. They've actually got fewer people living in the state of North Dakota than they do in the entire city of San Francisco. North Dakota's population wow. is 779,000 residents, putting them at number 47. And when you look at the size of the state, they're ranked 19th in the nation, giving them a population density of 11.1 people per every square mile. I think uh, Brock Lesnar lives in uh, North Dakota. I th I th I'm pretty sure of that. Number three, Montana. Montana is another state where their growth got stunted in the very beginning. As the pioneers pushed forward, they kind of passed wow, by Montana image. and Look a few that. other states on their so way to Oregon, Washington, and, and California. A lot of them, as they got towards the western side of Montana, said this is far enough because that's some beautiful land up there. The eastern side of the state is kind of flat and kind of nothing. Not saying that's bad. A lot of people really like it. It's just not that exciting if you're looking for a new, I don't know, like the paradise they were all looking for as they moved west. So that slowed their growth. These days, again, like so many other states, because there's not a lot of industries besides agriculture. It's kind of slowed their growth. But right now, they still don't have a lot of people. A lot of that has to do with the harsh climate as well because they get some brutal winters. But if you like the outdoors and kind of living in that cowboy theme, Montana might be for you. I mean, it's not like everyone's walking around with, you know, guns and cowboy hats and boots. But, you know, they, they kind of have that lifestyle and you could see it in the everyday things. It's kind of like amazing. an aura more than anything. Montana has a population of just over 1 million residents, ranking them 43rd in the nation. And in size, they're ranked fourth. That means their population density is 7.5 people per square mile. Wow. So if you wanted to buy a lot of land, like you could probably find a pretty good deal in Montana, couldn't you? You know, there's got to be loads of ranches and stuff available. If it's the fourth largest state in terms of uh, size, like... Number two, so Wyoming. People. I did a video about Wyoming has such a low population. And this is like the poster child for the stunted growth because it was a harsh environment back in the day when people were moving through here. And that went on for a very long time. So they had rough terrain and they've got a really unforgiving climate. Now that can be overcome these days with, you know, how we build our homes and the clothes we wear. But back then, it was life or death during the winter for a lot of people. So they just chose to move to other places that were a little more forgiving. So they've severely had their population growth stunted over the decades. The population of Wyoming is 576,000 residents, putting them in last place for population. Now, if you look at how big they are, they're ranked 10th in land. But if you count water, so there's less people in Wyoming than there is in Rhode Island. And squeaks by them. They're almost exactly the same size as Oregon. But Oregon just has more surface water. So if you don't count the water, Wyoming wins. So they're ninth or 10th, however you want to look at it. Giving them a population density of 6.2 people for every square mile. Wow. Holy All smokes. right, before we get to number one, if you enjoy what we're doing here and you want to see another video, at the end of this video, YouTube suggests some other ones for you. And that really helps out the channel if you watch another one. So if you have time, please do. If you don't, I totally understand. All right, on to number one. Who's going to be number one? Allah, of course, of course. Should have predicted. And number one, Alaska. Alaska so is the largest state we have in this nation, and it is for the most part uninhabited. They have a few places where they do have a good amount of people, Anchorage, Fairbanks, mm. Soldotna, Nome, Alaska. Most of the places have maybe a thousand people. I think they got more bears than people in Alaska. I took a cruise to Alaska and we were talking to one of the guys at Skagway. He'd grown up there. I'd well, do you ever get bears in town? He's all, all the time. He goes, they're like wow. any other animal. You just chase them off. They're always trying to get in your trash cans. I said, wow. what's that like? He goes, it's a little different different than a dog or a raccoon. You come outside, you yell at them and they scamper off and they disappear right away. He goes, you get out, bears trying to get in your trash can. You're all, hey, get out of there. And they stare at you for a minute like they want to discuss it. And he goes, then eventually they just kind of wander away at their own pace. I don't know how true the stat. But what if they don't want to discuss it with you? What if they want to eat you? Like what if it's like, ah. <laughs> But there was like this environmentalist guy that was on the cruise ship. And he said that there's so many lakes and there's so much land in Alaska. They have lakes, you know, smaller lakes and stuff like that, that probably nobody's been to in 30 years, you know, other than seeing a picture of it or a satellite. Nobody's actually walked up to that lake. And it just kind of tells you how big this state is. Alaska is so sparsely populated. They pay people to live there. 
And when you what? do live there, they don't like to let you go. I'm not sure if this is still the case. I went to school with a girl, still friends with her. Her daughter's now like 20 in college. But when she was younger, she had her daughter when she was with her husband in Alaska. Well, they got divorced and she wanted to leave. State wouldn't let the child leave. It's all what? kinds of hoops to get that taken care of. Now, what why do don't people mean? live here? Well, first of all, it's detached from the rest of the United States. That's a big hurdle for a lot of people. Land can be inexpensive. That's a plus, but everything else is expensive. There's not a lot of industries up there past oil and maybe lumber and salmon fishing. So it's just too wild, too far away and limited economic opportunities. The population of Alaska is 733,000 people. That's not a lot of people for being the largest state. They're actually ranked 48th in population and More they're the I largest state, meaning their population density is 1.3 people wow. for every square mile. One. One. All right. That's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed I would really, really love to explore like the states on this list just to feel that, you know, quietness and um, remoteness and peace and quiet. You know, I've always lived in busy, large, you know, noisy cities like I've never lived somewhere or spent an extended period of time somewhere really relaxed and quiet. I think that would probably do a lot of good for me, to be fair. I think it would just having some peace and quiet for a while. Uh, I'd love to, like Alaska for sure, you know, I'd love to do Alaska because then you could do, um, I think you could see the Northern Lights as well and you could see the, do the North Pole. I think that would be so much fun. Yeah, I'd love to do some kind of excursion. But yeah, you know, just, I think there's a lot of opportunity here because, you know, a lot of the big developed cities are becoming unaffordable for people, you know, so is there no way that you could incentivize people to move further out, especially if their jobs don't require them to be in, say, a New York City or a Los Angeles? Like if they can work remotely, why not? But I guess it's not in the interests of the government to do that, I suppose, because if they can keep the property prices high, that means they generate more from from property tax. So I guess there is no real incentive for government to do that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.